hello guys welcome once again to my channel my name is larry today i'm going to be editing the picture that i took about some weeks ago with you um so that you see how i do my retouch and uh, just to give some background into how i took this image like i always say i just go deeper into the image and you can see that i had a soft box so that was basically a two light setup so i had this soft box you can see from her eyes on the left side of the model and below the soft box i also had a reflector which was bouncing some light that is coming from the soft box back into the model just to fill some shadows that i had here and also behind the model i had a speed light that was gelled yellow so i just had a normal speed light and put a yellow gel on it and bounce the lights so the lights coming from the speed light i bounced it back on the backdrop so the backdrop was actually black but because of the speed light the coming lights coming from the speed light you get the sort of gel effect or yellow effect so with the same black backdrop you can get several different colors in case you don't have a backdrop that is yellow or red so i wouldn't do my changes here um, i'm just going to open the image go straight into photoshop and the main tool that i'm going to be using for my research and is frequency separation so just to talk about the skin research and there are tons of videos on how to use frequency separation and I would advise you can check some from Pix Imperfect, you can check some from PH Len or Flen or whatever it's called, and you can really understand the process. So, what the whole idea of frequency separation is that you split the image into two layers the color layer and the texture layer. So, just to begin with, so what I it's a sequential process of what you have to do, but I normally just download an image that generates this for me. So, I can give you a link to an image to a frequency separation that you can load into your Photoshop and just click and you go. So here I'm going to use the frequency separation 16 bits and I'm going to change the radius. So when you watch a lot of frequency separation videos, what a lot of tutorials suggest is that you change the radius to a section where you don't see most of, or to a radius where you don't see most of the blemishes from the model. So this ideally would be somewhere around 24. So you can see that all the imperfections or the Sort of the blemishes are gone and but what i normally like to do on the on the other hand side i like to work with the lower radius where i rather see the imperfections so i normally typically work with about 10 this of course depends from image to image but honestly from my experience you know beauty shots where i have sort of more focus on a model's face 10 seems to work if you have a full body portrait you might then need to use about five or six because you wouldn't need to go that deeper into the image. So I'm going to just use 10 here for the, Gauss the Gaussian blur. I'm going to click OK here. So as you can see, I have two layers, the color layer, which is the low frequency and the high frequency, which is just a texture layer. When I turn off this, you can see that this is just skin texture. And here, if I turn off this as well, this is just a color layer. So what I normally like to do is I normally work with the high frequency layer turned off. So when I turn off the high frequency layer, I zoom in into the image. You can just press Z on your keyboard. And as you move the mouse right, it zooms in. Mouse left, it zooms out. So I'm going to zoom in a bit deeper into the image. And I'm going to select my mixer brush tool. So just come to the brush section, right click and choose mixer brush tool. If you, this is here, one shortcut you can also have is to press shift and B. So you can see it changes between all the brushes that you have in that window. So the Mixer Brush 2 normally comes with wet, load, 90, sorry, mix, flow and stuff like that. There's a very good website on the Adobe page or Adobe website where you can really understand how the Mixer Brush tool. But ideally, um, the most important thing that I normally use is the wetness. So the wetness, like you are painting, you are mixing colors, right? And the, met the wetness is how much of the colors you mix in each stroke so from here to here how much of the colors from here that you want to mix to here and the load is like if you have a bucket and you are painting from the so you put in the brush into the bucket and you are painting how much of um paint you still have as a reservoir in this bucket so the mixer brush is normally a very good tool when you are doing painting and i also like i mean it's typically also used for skin retouching because the whole idea of all these highlights and shadows is that when you have sort of a uniform transition from the highlights to the shadows, this sort of gives sort of a more subtle or soft skin look. So just to get straight into this, these are the normally the settings that I use for my mixer brush tool. I'm going to go deeper into the image by just pressing Z and moving in. And by the way, I'm using a Wacom tablet 
you can also do this with your mouse but i find working with a tablet a bit more easier so i can highly recommend this so i'm just going to press select the low frequency layer select press b on the keyboard to switch to the mixer brush tool and i'm just going to start painting so i'm just mixing the colors here so from um, where i have some imperfections you can see that as i'm painting i'm already getting rid of some of these imperfections here so i think i've zoomed in a little bit too much so i can zoom out a little bit and you can also increase the size of the brush with the bracket keys depending on where you are working on so you can see that i'm smooth look just look here you can see that i'm smoothing in the colors so i'm blending sort of the transition the whole idea is that you just blend in the transitions from the the darker or the highlights and the shadows and what i normally advise is that try not to brush in from the the darker side into the lighter side or from the lighter side into the darker side because otherwise you give the image sort of a flat look and this is not what you want so just use the highlights and the shadows as a guide when you're painting i think i would increase the brush the wetness of my brush a little bit to get a stronger effect in one stroke so just brush in so i mean i sometimes fall victim by painting from the shadows into the highlights or from the highlights into the shadows but i think with time you get this so just subtle subtle touches i don't want to do anything so dramatic or to make the model look like a doll um let's see where we were this is before this is after so you can see just subtle changes right i'm going to turn this off and i'm going to continue mixing so i'm now going to come to the sections of the face the chin area what i sometimes do is to press r to flip the image press the space bar so one trick is that when you press the space bar you can it changes into the hand and you can click and drag to move through different sections of the image so what i normally do is the r to rotate and just press the space bar to sort of move through and i find it easier that's just for me i find it easier to move the brush horizontal than vertical that's why i like to flip the image so i'm going to flip the image the way i want it and i'm still going to be keep brushing here so brushing here you can see that i'm mixing the colors here so just to sort of this whole idea is just blending in the transition from the highlights to the shadows um we all fall victim of sometimes overdoing the retouching so i've had several occasions where i had to edit an image about two or three times because i felt this frequency separation was too much what you can also do is after doing the frequency separation you can just reduce the opacity of the frequency separation layer so the strong the higher the opacity the higher the effects so when you reduce the opacity you can see that the effects will reduce so i'm just brushing in generally nothing special i mean you wouldn't see this. the beauty is that you don't really see this as you are doing the you're working with the mixer brush too well when you finish and you turn on the the texture layer or the high frequencies layer then you really see where you were working and here i don't really like the transitions here so i'll go back here increase the brush size a little bit and brush in a bit more so just try to stay away from pushing the shadows into the highlight it's very very important i've had this several times where at, at the end of the frequency separation i realized that the image just looks flat you can correct this of course with dodging and burning if you really have to then contour the face with the shadows and the highlights but i feel like it's if you can avoid it you don't need to do this so I'm done with the face here. Um, let's just have a short view or a short look to see what we've done. Could be that I've done an overboard, but then you can always correct this. I'm going to press R, reset this, turn on the high frequency layer, and let's see where we were. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Subtle changes, this is before and after. See, we are blending in the highlights and the shadows to give the skin more of a soft effect. So I'm going to continue this and now move to sec different sections of the image. Yeah, sorry guys, I had this issue sometimes that my Photoshop just crashes on me and I need to restart everything. Luckily, I saved where I was, so we can continue now. So what I, I think where I was was that I'm going to now apply the frequency separation to different sections of the skin. So I'm going to move in now to the hand area. I'm going to flip this a little bit press the B for the mixer brush tool probably I'll zoom out a little bit and keep 
expression. So just sets our changes here. If you feel it's overboard, I mean, this is like I said, it's just a matter of taste. I sometimes do this just too much for just for demonstrative purposes. You can always, once you know the technique, you can do it as the way you feel fits you best. I mean, photography, like I always said, is a matter of perspective. So it's um, the way you might see it might be different from the way, and what it might be an overboard to you might be perfect for another person. So um, this is just the way I'm doing it now. So here, I just have to brush it a little bit as well. going a bit deeper here see where I'm actually brushing and sometimes it also happens that you can brush in from the outer layer and feed the color into the skin so just undo this and be watching this that it doesn't happen because sometimes you finish everything and you realize that you had some color spill from the background or from the models outfit into the skin layer so just check this as well when you are doing the mixing that this doesn't happen to you i think it's okay yeah sometimes i also use the mixer brush too which other people do not know as well you can sort of use it to sort of give an eye on the effect of the outfit of the model so i think i've said this in other videos that i did as well just going to brush here Well, I think I'm, I'm I'm good. I think this is enough. So press Control Zero to zoom in to fit the screen. Press R to reset. And I'm just going to turn on the high frequency layer now. So this is before. This is after. Subtle changes. I mean, very very subtle changes. I think I'll crop in deeper into the image to where I would want this to be. It's sometimes a bit easier for me when I just know my destination where I want to be. This is, I think, a good crop for me. So I'm going to zoom in into the image. So now let's look. This is before. This is after. Before. After. Before. After. Before. After. So I'm going to now go in a bit deeper. And what I'm going to do is to work on the texture. Click on the high frequency layer. Come here. Um, zoom in a little bit. I mean, there's a matter of taste. I'll come to the clone stamp tool, which is this one here. And I might even just press S on the keyboard to the clone stamp. I think I had a wrong tool here. I'd right click here and select the clone time tool. And change the layer here, very important from, I don't know if you had it, that's current and below to current layer. And I'm just going to pick from a good section and paint into where I want to correct. One trick you can also have here is to introduce a black and white layer and reduce the reds of the black and white layer sometimes helps to see the blemishes or the way you want to correct a bit more then click back to the high frequency click and correct click correct so that's what i'm going to be doing now i mean i wouldn't clear sometimes it takes me a bit more time to sort of clear these imperfections and one also trick that i can tell you is that sometimes even when you change the radius of the frequency separation to about three or five even with a mixer brush too you can get rid of most of the blemishes so with the lower radius the lower the radius the easier it is for me at least from my experience to get rid of these blemishes so when you have a very high radius sometimes you don't really see the effect of the mixer brush tool i see it i always usually watch a lot of youtube videos and i was like why doesn't the mixer brush tool work with me and I realized that the issue is just because when your radius, when my radius was too high, I mean, it works, but the effect wasn't that strong as when I had a high radius. I mean, when I had a lower radius. So um, you just experiment this, play this, and find the best settings that work for you. I think I'm done for now with the texture layer. I can remove the black and white layer. And let's see where we've gotten to this before and after, before and after okay so i'm going to go a bit deeper now the next thing i'm going to try to do is to so i have sort of like what i call a more of a global dodging and burning so it's not very specific so i apply it to the whole image it gives me more contrast and it gives me also a pop so what i normally do is just come to the curves so start a curve layer 
change the blending options to multiply and i would name this dodge sorry burn because the darker sections is the burn and i also create then a new curves layer called this dodge sorry dodge change the screen called this dodge i'm going to group these two layers um, call it DB. I just call it DB for dodging and burning. I actually learned this trick from one um, YouTube channel called PS Designs. The guy has very good things on his channel and I'd highly recommend that you visit his channel. So what I'm going to do now is to turn on the 10 of the, let's start with the dodge, 10 of the dodge, 10 of the burn, double click on the dodge layer and the dodging is for the highlights. So I want to remove the darker sections. I only want to apply the highlights to where the highlight sections of the image. So the dodging should only be applied to the highlight section of the image. So I take this completely out of the, the darker sections and just to make the transition so you can see that this has been applied only in these sections. And these are where the highlights of the image are. And to make the transition a bit smoother, I'm going to press the Alt key and drag this out. So you can see that makes the transition a bit more smoother. So I think I like this. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to do the same for the burning. So I'm going to now activate the burning layer, turn off the dodge layer, double click to go to the blending options, sorry, to go to the layer style. And I'm also going to remove this from the darker section. So take this out from the, sorry, take it out from the highlights. And I'm going to smooth the transition by pressing Control or so I'm by pressing Alt, sorry. And I'm going to move this to get a smoother transition. I think I like this. And then I'm going to turn on the two layers. And what do you what I what you actually see here is that it gives the image this kind of pop, and I really like this as well. So it works kind of well for me. What I'm going to do is to generally reduce the 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 opacity. A little bit i think this works fine for me so this is before this is after maybe too much i can just reduce this a little bit and it gives sort of i call it sort of a i mean it's called like a dodging and burning to you um expand. so you are increasing the darker sides and you are making them more darker and there's areas that are brighter you are making them more brighter so it gives the image sort of a global dodging and burning effect. So let's look at where we were before. This is where we started with, and this is where we are now. If you feel this is too much, you can always reduce the opacity a little bit, but I think this is fine. And the second thing I'm going to do, or the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this model skin a bit more brown. And what I do is just come to activate a black and white um, layer and change the blending options from normal to multiply. So this gives the models, the skin, a very brown tone. It works a lot when you're working with dark skin models. And I'm going to first click on the mask. I don't want to apply it to the, the whole image. So I just want to invert the mask here and go to the brush tool, change to a normal brush tool and brush in where I want this effect to work. Okay, so I'm gonna go deeper into the image. I'm sorry, I have some issues with my Photoshop all the time and I have to always restart. Forgive me if this, is, I know it's a bit annoying, but I unfortunately have to deal with it. So I just changed the colors here. With white, it means reveal. When it's dark, it means conceal or hide. So I just paint it into sections where I want this effect to be. And you can generally, what you could do is to, what I normally like to do, is to just paint broadly. Then after that, I correct this from the from the areas where I don't want this to be applied. So oops, that was too much. I'm gonna do this here as well. So very quick. I'm not doing this so perfect, but of course you can, when you're doing this, you can really take your time and um, paint this well. So I'm just gonna touch small sections here. In a way, if you make a mistake, like by painting, I don't want to just press X to get back to the black and hide this effect again. So I think this is fine for now. Um, what I'll do 
is then of course the effect is too much so go back to wait i think i painted here this is bad this section here of course i didn't want to touch that area um come back here and reduce the opacity of the layer so to about let's say about 45 percent seems to work and i think this section so i'll come back to the brush go back to my brush layer and correct this section a little bit to work out there a bit more so just to give the model sort of a bit of a darker skin tone you can do this seems to be okay i think i was brushing a bit more here sorry change to white and brush this a bit, a bit more it's 20 here and what i also sometimes like to do is to sort of give the make the effect everywhere in the image so i can change my flow to about five percent and sort of brush in the other sections where i didn't have this as well so just to make sort of this moody dark tones apply in all the sections otherwise sometimes when you have only the models skin having this effect you realize that it doesn't blend in that well into the whole image so i just sort of make the effects it's a pinky touch on other sections of the of the image so press V for the normal um, pointer you can change this back to here press Z to zoom in and like I said you can always re reduce the effect if you think this is too much count down and reduce this a little bit I think this this seems to work well for me so this is where we were and this is where we are now so what I would also do is to think the image is generally a bit darker could also come from the dodging and burning here so i can reduce the opacity here as well reduce this a little bit so you can just play with the opacity to get what you think works well for you generally you can also increase like add a curves layer and just increase the overall brightness of the image with the standard controls that you've already put it in there so i think this is fine still want to have a bit of the dodging and burning here and what you could also do to add more pop to your images so you can come to the levels and play with the black and white so you can increase the you can shift the whites the black slider a bit more to the blacks and pull that for the whites a bit more in there so it also gives some pop to your image so you can see this is before this is after you can see that the colors get a bit more richer and this is what I also like as well. What I'm going to now do is to work on the model's eyes. Um, so it looks a bit darker here. I'm going to, maybe what I should do is to bright. So just to label my layers, then it's easy for me to color pop. Okay, so now I'm going to increase the brightness of the eye by the curves layer. Just increase this so much just focus on the eyes okay don't look anywhere just increase this high what you can also do is you can just make this screen so you make it a screen you're also basically doing the same but i normally want to have this so high so i just increase this so high after that then you click the mask you click invert so you invert the mask and now you apply this only where you want this to be so what people normally do is they just paint in the whole section of the eye. This is, works as well, but I normally like to do is a bit different. So what I normally like to do is to sort of make the size of the brush so small that I make it sort of in a stroke. Okay, you see what I mean? So what I normally do is I just like to paint this as a stroke. So sort of give the same effects. Sort of you see in every single green, right? That's how I think this is more natural than painting everywhere. If it spills off a bit into the white layer, you can change with the brush to black with the X key and just paint this off. And I'll do the same here as well. When I zoom in deeper into the eyes, you see that it's it's that's how it's actually is. You have like see different grains. So I'm gonna do the same here change the size of the brush to very small press out to rotate 
change from black here to white because that's where you want to have the effect so and just paint yeah so that it, this wasn't so nice i don't do this a little bit reduce the size of the brush and just paint so just paint this a little bit press out to flip a bit and just paint this so i find this a bit more natural than painting the whole section and you can also do this nicer when you're doing it yourself so i'll reduce this resets and when i go in deeper you see that we added some pop so this is before this is after so this is eyes before and after what you can also do is um you can also increase uh, the the brightness by hue and saturation so go to hue and saturation then press the alt, you see that when you press the alt, it shifts like the icon or the, the mouse pointer shifts that you want to apply this layer here only to the below the layer below. So when I press alt and I press the I, it I press sorry, it applies the effect from the hue and saturation only to the layer below. And here you can increase the lightness. So you wish you can increase the saturation. If you want, you can change the colors here as well. But this, I think I don't need it this much. So this, I'd revert this to how it was. Maybe pop in the saturation a little bit and this should be fine. So this is before and after. Just subtitle changes. The last thing I'm going to do is to add some, some sharpening into the image. So what I normally do is press Control, Alt, Shift and E to create a, a stamped layer of the image, go to filter, then go to other, go to high pass and change the high pass to about 1.4. This should be fine or 1.5. Sorry, this is too much. One point. Sorry, my keyboard is sometimes misbehaving. I'll just change this to two and change back from normal to high, sorry, to overlay exactly here I'm sorry and then you can see that it adds some pop to the image so it adds some some sharpness to the image this is before and this is after so this is generally a, a full tutorial on how I do my images before I upload this or my general retouching and let's see where we were this is where we started from and this is where we are so these are subtle changes and the little changes make the best image i mean sometimes you don't really need to go overboard to show all these things just subtle changes and this is what i found to be the best so you can follow me on instagram on larry sapon i would put a link to my instagram channel or my instagram profile that you can just follow me on instagram as well if you have any questions please put this in the comment sections i'll try my best to answer all your questions and also if you want to edit this image with me you can give Give me your email address in the comment section and i would send you the raw data that you can also edit the image with me thank you very much don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos and also if you have more questions i know this was too much in one video i can split this into different sections to make the video a bit shorter and probably more precise so let me know what you'd want me to do a video on and i'll try to keep this updates to this in several videos that i do thank you very much for watching and have a great day bye